everybody. Hello. That was so good. You had so much energy. <laughs> you turned on your YouTube voice. First of all, why don't you introduce yourself to my audience a little bit? Like, how do you identify? What are your pronouns? Mm -hmm. And etc. Hello there. My name is Chandler and I am agender and my pronouns are they, them. And to me, being agender means that I do not have a gender. So... I just don't feel it. It's not there. And you recently started tea, right? Mm-hmm. I started testosterone um, March 23rd. March 23rd? Mm -hmm. Isn't it April 23rd? Is it April 23rd? Today, is today my one month? I think today might exactly. Today is my one month on tea! I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about being non-binary and going on tea. Because I only recently, like, discovered that there were non-binary people in the world who went on testosterone. Really? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Can you just explain to the world how tea is not only for trans masculine people or trans guys? I went back and forth for many years on if I wanted to start testosterone or not because I had this weird guilt in my mind where I was like, well, I'm not allowed to take testosterone if I'm not this, 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 and this. I felt like there was a checklist that I had to like cross off in order to qualify to take testosterone. I felt like it would enrage people if I started taking testosterone and didn't actually identify as a male. And I knew that testosterone wasn't something that I wanted to take for the rest of my life. There are two different things that a lot of non-binary people on testosterone will do. Either they will take it for a short amount of time um, at a regular dosage, which is what I plan to do, or they will take it at a lower dosage for a more constant amount of time. And so I might change my mind and do that. Are you just feeling it out? Yeah. Okay. For right now, it's kind of like, I know that I'm going to probably do it for at least about a year because what I really, really hope to achieve taking testosterone that was gonna be uh, one of my next questions it's like what? what do you like what are your goals so really i just wanted um a little bit a more masculine appearance in a lot of different ways um and a deeper voice was a very very big thing for me is because usually people in public either read me as a girl right away or they read me as a young boy and so i was in positions where it was obvious that i was older which like pushed people to believe that I was a girl. For example, at my job, if people see me working, obviously they're not gonna think I'm 12. And so there was like this idea in their head, oh, this person is at least 18. And then seeing how they saw me, they immediately thought, oh, okay, well, this is a girl. This isn't like a prepubescent AMAB person. So you were either like in society's eyes, read as a woman or a little boy. Is yeah. that kind of what you were saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then also like, since I've been dating Xander, um, when I was dating more feminine people before people, you know, heteronormativity were reading it as a guy and a girl in the relationship. And since I was the less feminine person in the relationship, they would immediately go, okay, well then that's a boy. And since I'm dating someone who's more masculine than me in physical appearance, heteronormativity immediately goes, okay, so then that one's a girl. Yeah. And so that was also frustrating and got to me a bit. So kind of like my goal is just to feel more androgynous physically. There were other things that I kind of really wanted to help make me feel more in the middle, so to speak, when it comes to like feminine attributes and masculine attributes, I wanted to feel like I had a little bit of both that balance each other out more because I feel kind of like I have feminine attributes and I have masculine attributes, but they don't balance each other out every time. Sure. At the same time that I feel more both of them help me feel more neither of them. If that, that helps. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of explains it. That's kind of like a paradox that makes total sense. Yeah. I get how having both of the gender things could make you feel none of the gender things. Yeah, it's weird, but it, it makes sense in my sense. Uh-huh. So you actually kind of touched a little bit on how your social dysphoria and your body dysphoria have played into the decision to start T. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? A really, really big factor as to why I decided to go on testosterone was more of like gender dysphoria of people misgendering me and not so much discomfort of my own body as intensely. So like, I felt body dysphoria, but I felt gender dysphoria so much more. One of the reasons that I decided to go on testosterone was because I f feel extremely uncomfortable when people read me as my gender assigned at birth. And I realized when I was younger that when people read me as a different gender, that it made me feel super awesome, but that it wasn't because I identified with that gender. It was because I didn't identify with my gender assigned at birth. And that's how I realized, oh, then I'm something else. Like my gender identity is something else. I'm not that different gender that people are reading me as, but it still felt more comfortable to be read as that than my gender assigned at birth. And so I felt like I needed to, you know, ensure my mental health because I was not, feeling okay um, mm -hmm. with people constantly, 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 ma'am, she, her, um, that girl, and all those things. It, it made me feel uncomfortable to be read as my gender assigned at birth. And 
have not a single moment when people weren't reading me as that. Like how I was making the comment earlier about at work, people immediately read me as an older person. And so older person with high pitched voice, they immediately equated to a girl. Mm -hmm. And so they were immediately reading me as a girl and there was no question, there was no option I think there was one time somebody read me as a boy and that's it and it made me feel like really, really bad that there was there was no even opportunity that people were reading me as a different gender than the one that I was assigned at birth. And so I always equate it to like sweaters, how my gender assigned at birth feels like a really, really itchy, uncomfortable sweater that doesn't feel right and that being called by a different gender feels like still a wrong sweater. Less itchy though. Yeah, less itchy. <laughs> Maybe it's too big for me or whatever as a sweater is like not quite right, but it still doesn't feel horrible. I'm a realist and I know that our society is very binary oriented. I mean, the end goal is obviously I don't want people to gender me as she or he, and I would like people to use my pronouns they, them. But like, I, I knew that in a very binary oriented society that I wanted to be read as the other binary gender because I am so uncomfortable and tired of being read as the gender I was assigned at birth. And I've come to the conclusion very, very quickly that even if I were assigned male at birth, that I would have had the exact same moment. Right. That if I were assigned male at birth, I would have reached this point in my life and I would have been like, I, look, I'm tired of having If you were assigned this... male at birth and constantly being read as, yeah, as, as male. male, that I would be, I would be in this exact si same situation and be like, I want to start estrogen. Right. It's like, I want to get a more in between physical feeling. Okay, so it's more of like, I, I, I know that it's gonna be later down the line that people finally sure. start using they them pronouns more in society. And so I just, I was like, I need more of a balance. I need more of both of it. I can't be read always, always as yeah. a girl um, because it, it constantly felt like there was no balance. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. I've, first of all, really liked the conversation so far. Nice. So I guess like my wrap up question, <laughs> is if you had to send a message to other non-binary people out there who were questioning whether or not tea was a good idea for them, what would you say? I would say that in any situation, if you wanted to start testosterone, regardless of how you identify in terms of like if you were non-binary or for example, if you were a trans man, to really weigh the pros and cons, consider everything, and then don't let other people hold you back. Like, regardless of whatever the situation is. Like, for example, if you're a non-binary person who wants to go on testosterone, don't let other people hold you back if that's something that you know is right for you. And on the flip side of that, like, if you are, like, I know that Ryan Casado talks about this a lot. If you have identified as a yeah. trans man mm -hmm. and you decide, you know what, I don't want to go on testosterone, don't let other people hold you back from that. So, like, don't let people tell you, well, you have to do this if you're going to be this. Yeah. Or you can't do this if you're going to be this. It's so, like, don't let people tell you, don't let people police you on what you know would feel most comfortable for you. That was perfect. Thanks. Is there anything else I wanted to say? We have other videos. There's another video on my channel you can check out. Absolutely. Below, links are somewhere. Yeah. Like and subscribe. Go follow them on Twitter. Let me give you all your social media plugs on your own channel. There. Follow them on Twitter. Follow them on Instagram. Follow Grace. Follow all of these other people in their lives. My cats might make a Twitter. Yes. Follow that. Follow everything. We talked about Ryan Casada. Follow, follow Ryan Casada. Okay, okay, bye! bye.